this is sindam patel and welcome back to the video lecture series of the fundamentals of machine design in this lecture we are going to learn the design procedure or the steps to solve the examples of the quarter joint so examples of quarter joint are very important as per the as far as your examination is concerned because in your exam this type of examples can be asked into seven marks as well as in some uh, examination they can be asked in the, into the 10 to 14 marks and that's why uh, it is very important for the uh, example examination point of view and that's why we will start with the first step uh, the, with first slide which contains both the given data as well as the example procedure so uh, the given data will be very simple in each and every examples and i will going to keep this safe uh, space for the annotation and explanation so that I can explain you accordingly. So first of all we are going to see with, uh, that our given data indicates that uh, the design a socket and a spigot joint to resist a tensile load of 30 kilo Newton. So P is given in the P given data ok. So the P value only is given the sigma T for the material is 50 newton per mm square sigma c is 60 newton per mm square tau is 35 newton per mm square so three different stresses are provided in your given data and using those stress you are going to design a socket and a spigot joint entirely use without any help so what we are going to do we are going to stick to our procedure which was already explained in our previous lecture so if you have not seen the, that lecture then I recommend each and every student to, to watch first that uh, previous lecture and uh, then uh, calculate using this method in, in order to have a better clarity and understanding. So uh, we will start with the first step according to our procedure that was mentioned in our previous lecture uh, that is nothing but the step number one of design of a rod. So design of a rod can be done using considering the failure of the rod in tension. So if you consider the failure of the rod in tension then the sigma t equals to p upon pi by 4 d square equation will be utilized. In this equation we have the value of sigma t, we have the value of p, the only unknown which is remaining to be calculated that is d and d is calculated as a 27.64. Now this can be considered as a 28 mm and that's why our final answer of the diameter D that is the diameter of the shaft or the diameter of the rod is 28 mm. Now we are going to consider uh, calculate our step number 2. Step number 2 is thickness of the quarter. The thickness of the quarter itself is an assumption that is t equals to 0.3 times d and if you calculate using your calculator you will be able to consider it as a 8.4 mm. Now if it is the 8.4 mm it can be considered as 9 mm. So this was the answer of our thickness of the quarter. Now this is an assumption and we are going to calculate our next dimension using the assumption only and that's why we need to consider the safety of our component during the working condition and in order to verify or ascertain whether our component is safe or not during the working condition then you will have to calcul calculate the value of the stress generated into the material and compare that value of the stress with the given value of the stress so that you will be able to ascertain whether your working material or the component is safe or not during the working condition. That's why we will start with uh, the design of the spigot which is the uh, step number 3 and step number 3 is the design of the spigot. So the crushing stre stress is our step number 3a where we are going to calculate one dimension using the previous assumption. So 
the sigma c is nothing but the p upon d1 by d1 into t this equation is directly considered from the previous design if you do not know this equation you can go back to our previous lecture and uh, see how we got that equation and from which area we have considered that equation so we are going to utilize that particular equation from the previous lecture only and if you do not know that type of a equation then you can easily calculate it using the your own method okay so uh, dp upon d1 into t that is our uh, equation and uh, if you want to calculate the value of d1 then you will have to make it as a subject and by making it as a subject you will have to consider the d1 as a 56 mm that is our diameter of the spigot that is the diameter of the spigot uh, or the rod or we can say it as a diameter of the socket end or the inside diameter of the socket end this was the calculation using the assumption now we will ascertain whether our design is safe or not in the step number 3b now as you can see this is the step number 3b where we are going to evaluate the value of the sigma t and we will compare that value of the sigma t with the given value of the sigma t so that uh, so that we can uh, compare and check whether our design is safe or not. So the equation of the sigma t is this that is sigma t equals to p upon pi by 4 d1 square minus d1 into t and if you put each and every values into this equation then you will get the answer as a 15.31 newton per mm square. Now this is the answer which we have calculated. Now if you compare this answer with the given value and the given value is nothing but the 50 Newton per mm square, it is clearly visible that your answer is less than the given value and that's why your answer or your design is safe during the working condition whether uh, uh, you are using the assumption or not. So this was the our step number 3 and the entire step number 3 is complete over here. Now we will move on to our step number 4 and uh, escalate our design procedure with this. So in the step number 4 we are going to calculate the spigot collar or crushing stress uh, uh, using the crushing stress equation. So crushing stress equation for the spigot collar was uh, derived in the previous lecture as p upon pi by 4 d2 square minus d1 square for this particular ring. Uh, that was the ring of the spigot collar in crushing and our intention was to calculate this area uh, of as a re resisting area. So if you put this value of, of this area it will look like this and if by putting the value of each and every parameter the only unknown parameter which is remaining that is d2 and d2 is equals to 61.42 mm. Now this can be considered it as a 62 mm final answer so 62 mm final answer of our d2 is uh, over here now uh, step number four is complete and we will move to our step number five step number five is the shear stress and the shear stress itself give you the answer of the tau tau is nothing but the p upon pi d1 into t1 and uh, pi d1 into t1 uh, in this equation we have the value of d1 we have the value of tau we have the value of p so uh, if you make the subject t1 then you will get the answer of t1 as a 4.87 mm now this answer is can be written as 5 mm and your step number 4 will be complete over here so, so step number 5 is complete over here and we will escalate our design procedure to the step number 6 and the step number 6 is the spigot and design so the spigot and the design that is the design of the dimension a and the dimension a can be calculated using the shear stress this shear stress equation is nothing but the uh, tau equals to tau equals to uh, p in p upon 2 times d1 into a and if you make the a as a subject then uh, p upon 2 times d1 into tau will be your equation and uh, by uh, substituting by putting each and every parameter into this equation you will get the answer of the a as a 8 mm now this is the answer of this distance between the slot and the rod end 
and that's why we are going to consider the next step upcoming that is the step number 7. The step number 7 is the design of the socket. The design of the socket it, it can be done using the tensile stress equation and the tensile stress equation is nothing but the P upon pi by 4 d1 square minus d1 square minus d1 into minus d1 into t. Uh, in this equation we have the value of small d1 and t and p and sigma t. So your only unknown which is remaining into this equation will be capital D1. If you consider this capital D1 then you will have to uh, simplify this equation into this manner then your is equation will be like this. Now if you put the value of the uh, equation in this manner then you can directly solve this equation uh, using the trial and error method as well as as an algebraic equation. Uh, by the sol uh, solution you will get the answer as a 70.313 and that can be written as a 71 mm. So that was the end of our step number 7 and we will move escalate our uh, example to the step number 8. Step number 8 is the step uh, which can be designed using the crushing stress and the crushing stress equation is nothing but the sigma c equals to p divided by d2 minus d1 into t. Now this equation contains the value of the d2 that is the unknown, unknown which is the only unknown of the equation and that is why we are going to put the value of d1, t, h, sigma c and p so the only unknown will be d2 and d2 can be calculated as a 112 mm. Now we will see the step number 9 that is the socket collar. The socket collar can be designed using the shear stress or the end of the socket collar uh, can be designed using the shear stress as a tau equals to p divided by 2 times d2 minus d1 into c. As you can see in this equation we just calculated the value of the d2 in the step number 8 and we have the value of the d1 from the previous steps. Tau is given in the given data, P is also given in the given data, the only unknown which is remaining to be calculated is C and if you make the subject as C then you will get the answer of the C as a 7.65. So if you consider this 7.65 you can directly write the 7.65 as a 8 mm. So this was the end of uh, step number 9 from which you calculated the value of the distance from the slot to the socket end or the distance between the slot to the socket end. The last step which is the width of the quarter which is the mean width of the quarter that is the, uh, that can be uh, calculated using the shear stress equation. The shear stress equation for the width of the quarter is nothing but the tau equals to p upon 2 bt. Now tau equals to p upon 2 bt uh, can be uh, made b as a subject and p upon 2 b tau will be your final equation. We have the value of p, we have the value of b, we have the value of tau then you can directly calculate the answer of the b as a 47.62 and b equals to 48 mm will be your final answer. So this was the end of our example. As you can see this was the basic example of the quarter joint which was completely solved using the procedure of the quarter joint. So if you know the design procedure of the quarter joint, if you know the theory of the quarter joint, if you know each and every areas of the quarter joint then you will be able to solve this example without any mugging. So you don't have to mug up each and every equations, you don't have to mug up each and every procedure steps or the sequence, you just have to clear the definitions, the di dimensions and the, the concepts of the each and every stresses which are going to develop during the working condition of the quarter joint. So if you are going to design the quarter joint due to sustain the tensile force then you must understand this design procedure in order to solve these examples. Okay, so by, so, uh, by the end of this example, we conclude our lecture over here. Thank you.